What's going on, everybody? Welcome to episode 1018 of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. I am your host, Christian Piles. You got two songs for the price of one. Shout out to our producer, Nikki. He was bragging about how ready he was, and then he did a pump fake on the song. Wrong song. To my right, I got James Dean Raider. To my left, Tyler Meisinger, a true hype beast. Oh! I knew this was going to happen. We shouldn't have told him about it. I said, I said, as soon as we sent him the link to this match, I said, we're going to start the show, Wait. and he's going to be watching it the whole time. We're going to be having to listen to it. It's Ben Askren. He's they wa- just cheated, my man. They just cheated him. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. They didn't give him a taste. He's got what did I on. say? I bet, that, I bet that was the foot, the foot stomp. And I said, I don't want to get into this. Oh, and- oh, he got a four. <laughs> They're not giving it to him, Christian. All right, Ben, can we do the show? <laughs> you promised. Uh, this, I'd never seen Frank Chimizo wrestle this hard. It's really tremendous. He really tried. Okay, I'm done. He did his best. Um, he, he got he got robbed. Yeah, that was not cool. Okay. Ben is here. Ben is in uh, his home. He's not in Madison. Apparently, you were spotted in Madison, Wisconsin, Ben. Uh, what what was happening there? Yeah, paparazzi I, in the trees. I was going. They got a nice team store uh, at the stadium, so I was Going to team store, buy some nice gear for a few of my friends. You're just buying. <laughs> you're just buying team team apparel. Yeah, yeah. Like maybe some stuff with Bucky on it. It's cute. <laughs> why don't you? Why don't you be honest? What, what What was going on? Well, I was just. I just told you I went to the team store. What now do you, you want from me? You're lying to America. All right, producer. Okay. Produ- I went and talked. I told. I sorry. I, I went and talked to an old friend and went to the team store. You talked to an old friend, went to the team store. Okay. Can Got you it. produce? Right. What did you get at the team store? A beautiful sweatshirt. Okay, can you go get it? I'm not going to get you to the sweatshirt. I will. Maybe I'll send it. If you know, if you were nice to me, I might send you a gift once in a while. <laughs> I try send to you. be nice. Hey, you know what? Actually, oh my gosh, I meant to bring this on the show. You know what? Actually, my dad got me this, uh, and it was hilarious. Did you know Culver's was founded on the exact same day that I was born, are July you, 18th, 1984? Are you serious? Yes. How wild is that? That's incredible. Yeah, that's, so you got me a mug that says it. That's amazing. <laughs> what what a what a historic day, truly. Not not even being Seriously. sarcastic. That's incredible. Great for the state of Wisconsin. Greatest day in Wisconsin history, right there. That should be a holiday. Yeah. Honestly, holiday. you know that's some good synergy. You got you know maybe one of Wisconsin's greatest athletes. You've got certainly Wisconsin's greatest food establishment, <laughs> all on the same day. It could be Seriously. Wisconsin's Independence Day. That, that's what we need to do. And then, you know what I need to do? Then, for my 40th birthday, I'm going to lead a charge, and we're going to take back the UP from Michigan because they're wimps. We're getting that UP <laughs> back. It's ours, damn it. It is crazy. I wish we – we should just always have a Wisconsin map pulled up just to show that they <laughs> basically – was Michigan just said, no, this part is ours, even though it doesn't even no. touch Michigan. The governor's a-, a wimp. He can't lead the charge. I'm going to lead the charge. <laughs> we're taking the UP back. That's ours. All right. Run for office, take back the UP. You know, there's that would a, be <laughs> that would be so funny. What if you ran on that? I think some people would get fired up about that. Hell yeah! And then Let's you find, go. and then you find out Michigan has a female governor. But what does that have to do? She with does. That? She and remember, remember said, they had that thing where they said, tried. That guy's a wimp. <laughs> oh <laughs> no! I'm governor. talking about the Wisconsin governor. Oh. The Wisconsin. Yeah. He's a wimp for sure. See, he's 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 just auto. Responses defend anything Michigan related, it's no true. matter what. It's true. It's it's literally, it's like a. Can you don't you respect that about me? I I do. It's actually one of the few things I respect. About <laughs> well, you're from you. California. Yeah, but he's he he renounced all of California. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that. Way. He's only California in his in his tardiness and his apathy for v- various aspects of his work. Just oh my kidding. goodness! <laughs> all right, so I I didn't really get to talk much about uh well any. On because I wasn't on the show Monday and I haven't got to listen to it, which means we banned you. We didn't let you on. Yeah, I wasn't let on. I wasn't allowed on the show. Um, But you were only on for 30 minutes because of your Mm -hmm. uh, the celebration of your nuptials. So congrats to to you and especially congrats to Amy (laughs) for landing such a stud. (laughs) stud. He's a stud. Man, if if Shane knew you back then, you know what? He'd be like, man, Ben Askren, that's who I wonder if you would have been one of those. Probably not. He's more of the he likes yeah. the classic all American uh, yeah. types for his daughters. Ben, you're a little too much of a wild card. <laughs> yeah, definitely too much of a wild card. Long yeah. hair, you're not so sure about it. Yeah, 
Anyone that uses a blow dryer, man, I don't know. I've never used a blow dryer in my life. Are you kidding me? You haven't? Serious accusation. How did you? How did you? Well, I figured that was involved with the picking process. Also, I don't know if I agree with no, that because I feel like Shane Sparks would love if uh, if one of his daughters dated Jake Herbert. Shane probably does use a blow dryer. Yeah, he might. Ooh. I don't know the volume in that hair. How does it not move? Gel. I would have to think. No, there's other forces involved. Spray? There's there's multiple chemicals that are preventing that. I don't think a singular chemical other than like, you know, I, I don't even know, would, would keep it that immovable. Aerosol? Very solid. Yeah, very solid. Aquanet is involved. JD needs a lesson from Shane Sparks and Hair Kemp. This is, I look, I'm looking at him this morning. It's all over the place. I know. It is. A little crazy. Yeah, he looks like Dr. Steve Brule. In the hair. I definitely know who that is. Yeah, you do. I don't know who that is? You don't know. Yeah, you do. The 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 four year <laughs> beard. Room guy. full of people in their twenties, dude. Get it together. No, Doctor Steve Bull is is <laughs> is funny now. It's John C. Riley's funny guy. Like, oh, okay, yeah. Oh, okay. The priest of it. Oh, oh, oh okay. Cool. Now who's they were cool? zooming in on JD once I don't again. Know if you guys can see that, but it was funny. Well, you just dropped John C. Riley, and I was like, okay. Once again, I'm the hip guy on the show. School. Well, I wouldn't nerds. call it hip. Well, I'm I'm I would. So agree to disagree. All right, enough. We went from nuptials to Steve Brule. So what were you going to tell us about Monday? Is well, that something about uh, trials uh, process or something? No, I mean, process is great. Uh, the only thing I was going to say is, you know, when, with so much discussion about these high school kids, and I don't know if I've talked about it on the show or not yet or if we have, but the thing that's so cool, because you watch Jax, you watch Bo, you watch these high school kids, not just compete, but win a lot of matches. Um, the focus is on Bo and Jax because they made the finals and Jax won. But pretty much every high school guy really competed and won matches and made fairly deep runs. And the thing that I thought is like, man, these guys aren't actually phenoms, right? These aren't like a, a Kerry Colat or a, a Pico or a Snyder where they're just so far separated from their peers, right? These guys are all losing within the last year high school matches pretty consistently. Yeah. They're losing to their to their peers of, of high schoolers. And so the, the the idea is like the widening of our senior level talent pool is just it just now involves these 17 and 18 year olds. The the best high school kids are now senior level wrestlers and they can compete and win at the senior yes. level. That's just the new reality. So with that you have a it gives me, you know, confidence and excitement for USA Wrestling for the future because we're going to be losing legends, if not this Olympic quad, very soon with David and Kyle, 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 Jordan, et cetera. Uh, but now when you think about it used to be you would think, all right, our guys Olympic and world team windows are, you know, late college at the earliest, if not. And then really post college. Now it's late high school. These guys are going to be qualifying for trials and winning matches yeah. against senior level guys. So it's just going to make our, it, you know, maybe that is what is going to help us compete with Russia in terms of depth. We, our, our best against Russia's best is close. Their depth versus our depth, not as close. But now I feel like, man, you see Jax. I watched Jax lose to high school. I, I watched Bo Bassett lose it. Who's number one? They're amazing. They're incredible. I'm not, that's not a, a, a knock. It just shows how high the level is of high school wrestling. And I don't see that changing. I don't think it's a golden era of high school wrestling. Then these guys are going to leave and then there's not going to be something behind it. I think it's just going to continue. So I think that's really exciting. And um, these kids are, and you know, if you haven't got to see the video yet, it went out yesterday of just kind of a follow along of the high schoolers quest to make the Olympic trials. And Th these are just really fun kids to follow. I mean, you talk to Aiden Sinclair, Aiden Valencia, Bo, Jax, uh, Cole Mirasol. They're just good kids. They're they're good with the camera. You know, uh, just good good mm -hmm. people to be around. So it was it was a treat just to be kind of alongside and just to follow their tournament and got me real excited about the future of USA Wrestling. So that was kind of all I wanted to add about that. Nice and good job, Ben. Cause you brought you brought some hammers right. there that were yeah. in the mix. It was fun to watch them compete. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so JD. Oh, I should also mention before we get into the thing, Tom Ryan coming on at 9:30 Central, 10:30 Eastern, 
So the last half hour of the oh. show, I will be speaking with Coach. And he's going to come on. We're going to talk about, I don't know, I guess transfers and you know, NIL. NIL uh, and all that yeah. stuff. So should be a good conversation. I'm looking forward to it. And yeah. JD, where, where to next, Hermano? Gonna do some tears? Yeah, let's do it. So, JD oh, yeah. um, made the tears. And Took them apart. For the Olympic trials field. Not for college. We're not going to college season yet. No. Sorry, yeah. Next for for Olympic trials weights. Um, maybe, uh, I don't know if we can pull these up, but at the very least. Could, I can pull them up. You want me to read them? The, I, well, I, I, I think he meant right on the screen. Of yeah oh got it got it got it got it but if not that um we'll start at 57 kilograms you guys um, should have made some nice graphics of it like you know you could do the tiers graphics and then you could have like islands and peninsulas and archipelagos yeah and that could be you know your tiers theme and then well you you're the, the geography major so i figured that sort of fell into your purview uh, not graphic design i will talk oh. to your graphic designer and i'll have them make something okay. up well tyler was going to but he said he had a date last night mm -hmm. so <laughs> But we all know that's okay. a lie. So now we have to actually figure out what he actually did. Cause... I went to a revolving sushi belt place. <laughs> did you really? Yeah, in North oh, Austin. That was okay. cool. Revolving sushi belt. Nice. Mm -hmm. Sounds so decadent. N no. Was there a lady there or no? My girlfriend was sitting across from me. So it was wow. a date. So you it was a date. No, you said you always do same side. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you said, well... I said, why do you do that? He's like, so we can hold hands. I'm not a same side guy. No, I'm we talked about this. Okay. I don't know. Well, anyway, <laughs> we'll get into the tears. <laughs> right. 57 Tyler. kilograms. Right. What did you do, JD? 57 kilograms. Tier one. JD, you want to read them or can you not read them? I can read them. Tier one. Okay, cool. Go for it. Spencer Lee, Thomas Gilman, Vito Ruscio. Mm. Read tier two and then I'm going to scream. Tier two. Zane yeah. Richards, Dayton Fix, Nick Suriano, Nico Megalutis, Jax Forrest. All right. So, uh, I don't yeah, like we, this. We need some, hold on. He's got, let him finish tier three and then we okay, can do some Okay, tier three. Tier three, Cronin, DeShazer, Lillard, Blaze. Got Figu it. Uh, Figueroa also. I don't think Richie Fix is Figs isn't going. No oh, Figs, no Parker that. Keckeisen. Boo. I know. Sad. What the heck, bro? Uh, I, I, listen, he was just telling me about disc golf yesterday, and before you told me, so I, I got my got to yell at him. Him, him and Kale Happel, I think they're going to come up and take a butt whooping on the disc golf course. Okay. Why, why isn't yeah, he doing right. it? Why doesn't he want to do uh, Olympic trials? I, I didn't grow him. I don't know. I'll, I'll ask him next time I see him. He did just get honored at the state capitol, I saw. That did happen. Is it Parker Kekheisen Day? Does Parker have a day before Ben has one in Wisconsin? In the whole state of Iowa, it's Parker Kekheisen Day. I was talking with it the Michigan. I was talking with the Michigan guys about how cool Parker is, and they were like, "Yeah, like he he came to Michigan. He's like so cool, but all he wanted to do was play disc golf." <laughs> they were like, <laughs> he, "He was obsessed with disc, disc golf, but it was awesome. Like we played with them. It was fun." So he's really into it. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I'm offended. Okay, was that disrespectful? Ball, for, oh yeah. Th there's wait. No. You're too respectful of the tier one group because they have done nothing to to earn that kind of separation in my mind. Well, maybe only Vito because he won a world title last no, year. We're talking, let's stay on topic though. 57 kilograms is the topic at hand. When have we seen That's him fair. do that at 57? Last time I watched Vito yeah, at 57, he couldn't last six minutes with, with TP Gilman. And the next year, Gilman lost twice to Zane Richards. We should have a mega tier one. This is a wide open weight class in my, in my opinion. Mega. And maybe there is a chance, I'll say this, I... Spencer Lee should be in tier one. And you could say, I can, you could say, what has he actually shown? And we're kind of, this is a little bit of, you know, prediction with Spencer. And I think it's fair. And I think there is a scenario where he separates himself from this field entirely. I think that could happen. But I think based on the results that we've seen from Spencer, I don't think you can separate him from a Dayton yes, from, uh, I agree. from those other guys. I think you could go mega tier one. I think you have basically the right guys. I like actually the inclusion of Jax. Um, so yeah. Oh, so, are... okay. I want to, I want to go a different direction. I'm going to bump Zane up to tier one. Yeah. Um, I don't think given fix what fixes looked like more recently, I don't think he deserves a, a, a bump to tier one. He's the top of tier two, but then also Jax forced in tier two. I don't know that I agree with that one because 
he just lost to Blaze a couple months ago, and he also lost to Lilladol semi recently, I think. So, like, um, especially with Lilladol, what has he done to get bumped all the way down to tier three? I agree with that. That okay. So I, I think Blaze, I think, I think Blaze and Lilladol could be up there with with Jax. I think they're they are absolutely peers. Uh, here's what I'll say about this: you you want to downgrade okay. Dayton? Could you elaborate on why? I'm not downgrading. I'm, I'm le- he's in tier two, and I'm leaving him in tier two. I'm moving Zayn to tier one. Okay, and and so I guess my question is, why is that? He be- um, yeah, because what what we've seen recently, Dayton just did not look super great this year. He won what three overtime matches or three really close matches to make the NCAA finals. Okay. Um, well, well, Spencer Lee last NCAA, uh, he got pinned and then forfeited out. And so, yeah, but now, now he's had other things since then where he's well, actually looked, he looked good at NYC and he looked good at, uh, was it US Open? Both those? And Farrell. Senior Nationals. He went to Senior Nationals and he went to um, Bill Farrell. Farrell. Right. Yeah. And, and, and there he beat, Nico was his best win in both of those, right? Yes. And, also beat Lilital, I believe. And Luke, yeah. Yep. He did beat Lilital. So, kind of, you know, kind of easy, easier. I'm not trying to pull Spencer down. I'm trying to just say if you look at what Dayton's accomplished, I feel like Dayton's folk style results are being used as a, a you know, well, something to downgrade him. He, he lost to Nishan at World Team Trials. Nishan, super good nishan pushed veto about as much as anyone pushed veto at 61 in freestyle so yeah. I, I think if you're gonna have veto up which no no issue how many tournaments did dayton wrestle in last year freestyle he just i think he only did world team trials challenge tournament because he was entered at the open and wound up not competing didn't Correct. come right so right but, oh, so but we don't have a ton of data <laughs> so who I'm, I'm going to find right now who were his it was, was it may or june uh may. may okay um I, who are his wins at the at the trials desanto I'm, I'm there. um he beat desanto he had a couple other good wins let's see so he beat joe clone three zero and he oh he actually beat seth gross and then he lost to nishan so he, and then he beat he ended up beating desanto uh for like the the true third or oh, national true third, true third or whatever so he beat cologne desanto and who was the last one? Gross. And gross. gross. Okay. Yeah. And and that's that's three good guys. Yeah, three really good guys. Now let's compare that to other guys that you think are tier one. I don't think I think that is certainly in this similar category. And okay. and maybe it's just I vibes. Could be talked into Dayton tier one. You talked me into it. All right. Dayton tier one. Can I yes. explain myself? I'll allow it. Yes. If you pull America and anyone who doesn't have a connection to these guys. Less than, I bet, 1% of people pick somebody in Tier 2, but you're going to get pretty evenly split between these top three guys, I felt like. But I, I don't disagree with that, but we are supposed to rise above public. Okay, I pull all four of us, and I bet we all pick one of these three guys. Ooh. I bet we'd all pick That's the uh... same. I bet we all pick the same one guy. I bet we don't. Who are you picking? You're gonna pick Spencer. Piles. We'll get we'll get in, we'll get into it next week. Oh wow! I'm gonna that's pick, a tease. I'm gonna pick Vito. There we do have a uh, Kozak in the chat saying, in his opinion, Gilman is tier one. Dude has won four world and Olympic medals, and he says the Richards yes. matches were outliers. IMO. I'm not saying okay. That's why he is tier one, and 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 yeah. I agree. So I agree with that, but you can't say, oh, he's tier one because of what he did in 2022, 2021 while ignoring everything that Dayton has done in freestyle as well. Right. Uh, he has, argument. I mean, he has, he's the most credentialed outside of Gilman um, over the last five years. Vito's got the world title. Dayton has world silver. He has more teams. Um, so he is in that similar kind of thing. You could say outlier for Thomas and Zane, but what's happened since then and what happened before then? Because prior to Zane, had we seen Gilman compete at 57 kilograms outside of the world championships? I don't recall. I was going to say, without getting into like tiers, like Gilman, Vito, and Dayton, when was the last time we saw them at 57? It's been a long time. For and, that's, that's my, and that's my yes. main point. That's why I'm a, a fan of a bigger tier one, because I, d- I know what Dayton's done at 61. I know what Vito's done at 61. And I know how Thomas looked against Zane. 
And since the Zane matches, what have we seen from Thomas? We, we haven't seen any competition, right? He beat at 61 once, didn't he, and lose and lost. So, you know, that's that feels relevant as well, right? So you can so say I, I outlier. Think I, I think it's... It, I there's kind a, of feel like we're in agreement here, Christian, that yeah. tier one is five people. You mm -hmm. talked me into it. Uh, and J.D. Blue was in Richards. <laughs> Spencer Lee, I, I, went, I went back Cameron and forth. <laughs> okay, Zane and, and Dayton, those five in tier one. But J.D., if you didn't make it the way you did, we wouldn't have this uh, more thoughtful conversation. So I think you did it exactly how you should have. He's a media professional. He's good. I just... And um, then are we bumping Lilladol Blaze to tier two or are we taking Jax down to tier three? That I, What if all the high schoolers are tier two on their own? Because they're so good, but they're so like... Kind of but, I feel like Jax can beat these yeah. guys. Well, that's just what I was saying. It was like, I feel like he could pick off one of those guys, but to run the gauntlet, I don't know. Yeah. Beat multiple and, of those guys. Yeah. Part part of the uh, part of the tier thing also is that uh, the other two who are left would be left in tier three, Cronin and DeShazer. Um, they've had how many attempts at beating the guys above them, and they have not been well, able don't to forget, do so. The Shazer so did beat Lil at all, so. <laughs> Dude, you're yeah. such a fake loper for putting him in tier three. Come on. No. <laughs> yeah, a, you are. This is a man who will be honest with America. <laughs> That's what we need. We need no, honesty. We need, we need I checked my bias. Team. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Uh, uh, you know, who who really is in that? Uh, okay. What do we think about Nick Suriano? He's the most handsome person in there. <laughs> on Tuesday. No way. I'm way more handsome. You're, are you going 57? <laughs> <laughs> If you're going 57, yeah, I will no, wait, boy. I will amend uh what I said. Um Yeah. Man, Suriano, he's just such a wild card to try to pick him at this point. He could he, he might even find his plane to get there. We're not sure. <laughs> that's honestly I don't remember which tournament he missed, but I believe he missed his travel to the tournament, and that's why he did not wrestle. Okay. Kozak Kozak thinks fixes tier two because he hasn't made a team since twenty twenty one and that was at sixty one. Um, all right. Mm. Well, Kozak's getting overruled by Christian Pyle. Yeah, <laughs> overruled. And lost Sorry, the veto at Olympic team trials in 2021. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Um, mm -hmm. That was like a that was also like a one point match with Dayton on the winning takedown as time expired. So I would say they're now. And since that time, they both won senior world medals at 61 kilograms. So that's not quite enough to separate them into two different tiers, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fair. 57 is good. Man. All right. So let's talk about this. All right. We talk about Soriano. We have no idea what to expect. Um, none. That's fair. These high schoolers, which one do you think has the best shot to go on a run? I, I view them all really similarly, but, and yeah. I don't know if it's recency or just, I was just kind of mind blown by what Jax did, uh, especially against NATO. Who has been, you know, he would he's been kind of a staple at 57, 61 for some years now. Um yep. that has me feeling like he could be a tough matchup for even some elite guys. Uh yeah, I mean that's we, we talked about that on uh Monday's show about just how, how good he looked and that that recency bias is gonna give you maybe uh a higher thought of where he could be, but Man, I have a hard time seeing some beat some of these better guys, and I and I do agree with you that him, Lil all, and Blaze are all really good, and they're all to me they're all like very similar skill, different different wrestling styles, but similar skill levels. I see that. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm excited. I mean, Jax just <laughs> has just incredible point scoring ability. What are you chuckling at? Uh, Kozak's in the chat. Uh, he's on the official full wrestling handle. He said CP is always wrong. No, that was me. Or is that you, Tyler? <laughs> that was me. Yeah, That's see, you. This is this is what they do. <laughs> they they just Kozak said CP's wrong, and I said CP's always wrong, dude. No, I'm not wrong. I I'm right. He he belongs there. <laughs> now the results could be whatever they are, but if you're going by results, you can't just cherry pick. Ain't ham picking your team today. Ain't ham picking the tears today. <laughs> that's what I say. Well, that's exactly what you're doing. What? Hand picking the tears. Yeah, but he, can't. <laughs> but he can't. But but he's handpicking by saying, "Oh, this data counts, but that data for this person doesn't count." And it doesn't matter that this person's wrestled in like two relevant tournaments in six years. We'll still put him in tier one because he's won. He's beaten two qualifiers ever. I mean, we all know my position 
and that's that you are always wrong yeah so that's, that's <laughs> i will stay consistent on that all right hey guys we need to get to the next tier we've only done a singular tier and we only have 30 oh minutes till goodness. our guest comes all on right. so we have five more to hit all right well 57 i, I think you so. kind of handpicked your uh data with spencer cp no i didn't all he's done on the senior levels beat nico <laughs> I did not. I oh, I did it. I did. I it. There's, there's <laughs> only how many different data sets do we yep. have of him at senior level? I mean, what if we're talking? That's kids. what I'm saying. If you could just go off data, should he be tier two? Um, I mean, I'm, last time he was in a bracket with uh, multiple of these guys. I guess multiple you could include Farrell, but he's never beaten anybody in tier one. Uh, on the senior level, all he's done is forfeit out of a tournament where he could have wrestled these guys. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just simply agreeing with what everyone else is saying that, yeah, he, I, I see what you see with Spencer, and he's very likely going to be... So you play. can use eyeball data. So is our tiers predictive or not? Mm, they're, they're... You know what? Don't We don't put labels on things. <laughs> like, we're not into labels or definitions like that. Is this data like rankings or are it's, these predictive? They're called vibes. Okay. And uh, that that's what they are. Spencer, tier that's one. I had off three guys test. in my tier one. Okay. Wait, you changed your mind? Or your My original three. Oh, your original three. Okay. <laughs> 65. With the caveat that somebody in tier one could be somebody in tier, tier two could be somebody in tier one. But it feels like one of those big three guys in tier one is going to be a rep. Man, I don't feel like that at all. I mean, well, okay, I do feel like one of them, but man, I, have, I haven't. Seen, but but I don't have any more confidence. In, I Thomas Gilman, fifty-seven kilograms, is a huge problem. I he's I think he's too big for it now. He looked that seemed to be the crux of the issue. It was a huge problem for one one tournament. Okay, and then what's happened uh, since then? Can I get us back on track? We're moving to the next weight class, or no? Yeah. Yes. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Thank you. All right. 65, JD, let's hear your tears here, buddy. Zane, Nick Lee, Yanni Diakmahalis, Andrew Lairs, James Green, Bo Bartlett, Joy McKenna. So mega tier. Mega tier one. Mega. Also kind of a big tier two. Two just just two tiers here. Tier two, Caleb Larkin, Jesse Mendes, Seth Gross, Matt Klodzik, Austin DeSanto, Alec Pantaleo, Nashawn Garrett. I think you could have three tiers here, maybe. Um because I what do you do with the James Green? Because this is someone who the last two Olympic trials, we've seen him try this, and he's just not the same guy down at 65. Um, this is new hip James Green. New hip, new me. New hip James Green, let's go. Okay. Let's ask Ben how, how much of how awesome that is. Oh, my God, it's, it's life-changing. <laughs> yeah. It really is. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not even joking. Okay, and yeah, he got the same surgery as you, right? Same surgery, yes. Okay. Kind of mm -hmm. similarly to 57 kilograms, I separated them by unbiased parties. You pull America. Their pick for champion is probably going to come from one of these, what is it, seven guys? Mm -hmm. And then everybody else kind of was, was my thought process. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, I, I mean, Zane, Nick, Yanni, Alirez, I feel sure of. Feels like there may be, in my mind, some separation, but I mean, this is there's not really that much separation between like Bo Bartlett and Nick Lee. Bo Bartlett got his hand raised against him. Joey has beaten Yanni in the past year. Yeah, that's why you're right. Um, I, would, I would, um, I would not to be offensive, but I would probably take James Green out. Just, I, no way, leave him in. No way, all right, leave Let's him. See what this new hip, got. you know what? New hip. He New hip clause. New hip one. James Green. Lead him in. Right. So I, I mean, I have to kind of agree with this. There's only going to be one contention for me because I, I, I said on Monday's show that, you know, it looks like a whole bunch of different people could win this weight class. I think you can make arguments for it. My only one would be you take Jesse Mendes out of tier one when he had just beat Bo Bartlett. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I could see him in tier one. Um, yeah, I could too. Or Bartlett tier two. But he lost a, he lost a Larkin at Farrell. So um, maybe move Bo down then. But Bo move, gets moved down because Jesse Mendez lost to Caleb Larkin. Well, it? Jesse just beat Bo twice in a row in I one know. takedown matches. Although I don't know that a standing Granby is allowed yeah. in style. I, I do know. It's not, it's not allowed. Uh, if you're you never, is. Listen, I've seen some Russian films where you can do it. And I, listen, I actually think, think about 
I can attempt a headlock and roll across my back without giving up points. Uh-huh. I can attempt other moves and roll across my back without giving up points. So why in the hell can I do a grab move without giving up points? I think I should be able to do it. So Jesse Mendez, either a tier one or vote down to tier two. Well, well I think the argument for that would be uh, yeah, it's got to be better defensive. Than that. <laughs> you're evading Let's go. a takedown by rolling to your back, not attempting yeah. to gain <laughs> offensive points. <laughs> Absolutely. Well said, JD. Dunked on him. Um, you guys just don't know wrestling moves. Oh, here we go. That's just what he <laughs> says. That's check and mate. Okay. I like, uh, man, I really do feel like this, this weight. This is the most open. For sure. I, I could see so many tier two guys. It's like you just think of an individual match of like, oh, this guy could beat this guy. Just Mendez Bartlett is a perfect example. Mendez, uh, maybe a lot of it involves Mendez. Caleb Larkin. I mean, Nation too. Nation, kind of a wild card. Yeah. I like all these yeah. guys. I mean, Alec Pantaleo, he was looking like this guy's a, a viable yeah. option. And then he tripled. He loses. He's beating Alirez, who we all think is tier one. And then he was up, I think, 3 0 and lost. And then he triple dipped to not qualify, and then he had to win Pan Ams to to get in. But um, so he has made weight multiple times now. Uh, so maybe he's leaning out a little in his older. Well, he age. went. He and went James seventy. He went seventy. I'm pretty sure at Pan Ams. Yeah. I oh so, damn it. So <laughs> and was vocal about how um yeah how much it sucked to make sixty five. Right. Maybe maybe take him out then. He's not leaned out. Uh, no, I mean, yeah. you can't take him out of tier two. You don't take him out of a tier. My gosh. <laughs> he needs a tier. He needs a tier. We all have one. Yeah. We all yeah. have one. And I'm above CP. <laughs> Only in wrestling skill. Okay. So, so that's funny. 74 right. or 65. Now it's wait, time wait, for... Wait, so are we, are, we, are we moving Mendes up or moving Bartlett down? What are we doing here? I, I do not stand up. for anything other. But if you move Mendes, you got to pull up Caleb Larkin. Over, he, listen, I love Caleb Larkin. No, I love don't. the entire Larkin family. Great people. They do. Eric, he's he's a man amongst men because he produced so many boys. He just kept put, you know, <laughs> impregnating his wife. Just boy, boy, boy. Like, holy crap. How do you do that? Like, How many boys he got? That's tricky. I think like six. Six boys? I, I, Is that listen, real? Uh, I'm pretty sure it's real. Someone, someone in the chat tell me, I believe there's six boys. Very oh, impressive man. statistics there. Yeah, that I is know, impressive. Right? I was gonna say, so uh, I love the Larkin family. Jeff Jordan's that's got three, win, right? I think, but six. That's not six. That's not six. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty certain it's six. All right, that's impressive. Impressive stuff. Okay, so I love the Larkin <laughs> family, Larkin. but let's go Mendez. Mendez tier one. Okay, I don't. I don't agree, but it is your right. Okay, so my, Mendez is in my tier one. He said you're right. That's what he said at the end there. He did say. <laughs> He <laughs> did say you're right. You just, you just, they, right. they don't teach a difference between your and your in, at Michigan. Well, it sounds the same to me. Your I don't see it any, I don't are. see it written down anywhere. Yeah, I know. Wow. We have five tiers. We, we, we're going to add some work to do, boys. Cause this, how does this make competitors at the next weight class? Some of them oh, have, wait. It. you should see 97. There's like, there's like six guys. So we were talking, I don't know if you were still on the show, Ben, on Monday when we were like, yeah, maybe there's like a few too many of those upper weights. And then it, Slims down a little it, bit, dude. Ninety-seven kilograms could take like one minute. It's no time. So it don't, yeah, don't, don't be intimidated, Ben. 11, 12, don't be scared. 30, you have, I think, what's am I counting right? Seventeen guys at seventy-four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's because you got all these 12, age 10, level. Seventeen. You have seventeen. Well, look at all the age level qualifiers. Yeah. Um. There's a lot. D. Lockett, Shapiro. All right, you want to re- read them, JD? All right. Tier one. Cal Dake, Jordan Burroughs. I salute this choice. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. Tier two, island. This is our first island of this segment. Jason Nolf. I think, honestly, yes. Tier three. I, I actually agree. Tier three, Keegan O'Toole, Carter Sirachi, Vincenzo Joseph, David Carr, Quincy Monday, Mitchell Messenbrink. Hmm. Tier four, Mark Shapiro, Tyler Berger, Levi Haynes, Alex Marnieri, Alex Facundo. And tier five, Jared J. Cuse, Ladarian Lockett. D. Okay. So uh, let me ask you this. When is the last time Burroughs? Because be, I feel like Dake should be, honestly, I don't even think Dake should be in the tier since he's sitting out until the finals. I think that, I don't know, it feels like he's not even in the tournament, right? Because he's sitting out until the finals. Um, when's the last time Burroughs beat Nolf? 
Like, could that 21. be more competitive? Just the last time they wrestled. 2021. So uh, no, didn't you have to beat him to... Oh, for 79. Yeah, sorry. I was confusing with the Olympic trials. Yeah. Christian yeah. was right for once. Uh, so, 21, <laughs> they wrestled. Um, and, and I, you know, Nolf and Burroughs, I think, will have a very competitive match. Starachi yes. at that tournament, beat Nolf. So, you could make Correct. an argument, should he be up... But since that time, but that was not at seventy four. I feel like that's different. Seventy four, and he's injured. That was another thing too. If we know we're getting a fully healthy Carter Sirachi, would you put him in a tier two? But then it's like, uh, but then do you have to pull in Keegan and David too? I'm. <sighs> I don't think so. Keegan Keegan lost to Nolf. I know at the U.S. Yeah, Open. Keegan lost to Nolf. Nolf's really last year. good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think this one also where you know we talk about like. Uh, you know, you wanted to take James Green on a tier one, right? and I, I didn't do it, but I think it's a, it's a fair comment because he is not as effective at 65 as he's at 70. You know, we haven't seen Carter Storaki at this weight class ever. Ever. Cor am I correct on that? Never. Ever. Well, he wrestled 182 ever. as a senior in high school, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so, like, what what is the track record of him being at 74 kilograms and then being affected his college weight class was 11 pounds above this like i remember making this on day before and it was awful and the first time the first time i made it day before i fell off a cliff the next day yeah. like i i was just done you know i wrestled two matches i felt good and the third match like i, I tanked yeah. um because my body was just not used to it and that was day before that's not morning of so uh, maybe he's smaller than we think, and maybe it's easy potentially, but there's also a potential it's not good. He is just so consistently maintained that he would make this way and make it with little issue. It's like, all right, I guess so. I mean, and but it's but funny think, because he's so he's so, such a confident person just generally too. That's it's what like, I'm saying. It's like, like ah, you think there's anything he's not confident about? It's a little bit of a Carter tax there. It's like, well, he yes, but then he kind of does almost everything he says he's gonna do, right? Well, no, like he said he was gonna smash Chance Marsteller and win the U.S. Open last year. Yeah, did he say that? So, I'm sure he did. Yep. I'm not saying he didn't, but I just don't recall. Uh, I think the last two years he said that about 79. I remember they had a little dispute in the 2022 trials. In, was uh, that the daddy Iowa. year? That was, if, if he didn't say, you yeah. can just assume he thought it probably. <laughs> <laughs> you can assume yes. he thought it and Carter be like, yep, <laughs> no, I said it. <laughs> exactly right. Well said, uh, Tyler. Okay. Uh, that was great, Tyler. That was Thanks. funny. <laughs> um, you should probably not talk the rest of the show because you're, you're not <laughs> yeah, it's going downhill from yeah there. yeah that was that was perfect um but, okay so yeah carter I'm, carter is such a wild card here from the health perspective the size perspective um mm -hmm. so you know i r reports are the cuts going well and he's feeling good so that's good news but also you typically only get positive news this at this point in uh yeah. before the trial so we'll see hope hoping yeah. for the best obviously 74 you know here's one okay my Shapiro should he be up in that's kind of what I thought it's your three but he's this him being a little undersized yeah. makes me kind of wonder yeah. like would I pick him to beat any of these guys uh yeah I think I would actually mm, would I which one I don't know I'm taking it back <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like Quincy's kind of a tough matchup. Maybe he could beat Vincenzo. Uh, I don't know. Ooh, I don't know about that one. The Vincenzo's. Ooh, I, I don't said know. maybe. I actually stylistically, I don't even like that for Meyer because I think some of the positions Meyer likes to be in and is able to exploit on other people. Vincenzo is good there also. Yeah, I feel like be, Meyer's be power from like certain yeah. positions is so crazy, and then Vincenzo is like that too. Like, Vincenzo like, has crazy hips. Crazy hips. Yes. Okay. Fine. Myers out. Let it not be said. Uh, but I think this is about right. I think you did this right. Five tiers. Good job. Would you, know, you like, uh, if you want to get predictive at all, do you think there are any tier three guys here that you could see beating Jason Nolf? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, Carter has. I think Keegan could. Um, uh, Mitchell's interesting, yeah. but I'm not sure just because, you know, this is, this is the first, I haven't seen him at the senior level yet. And it's his first real test there. 
Um, but you know, mm-hmm. anyone that wrestles as hard as him is interesting. But there's familiarity from the room. Nolf is so seasoned that feels sort of unrealistic. Um, but yeah, I could see some guys competing with and beating Nolf. Yeah, Chenzo and Nolf had an awesome match at the Open last year. If if you want to watch that on FlowWrestling.org, that was a good one. Dot edu. Okay. Not dot edu. Oh shoot. Dot edu. No, I thought we were at university. Eighty six kilograms. Are. Tier one: David oh. Morris Taylor the third. Tier two: Aaron Brooks and Zahid Valencia. Tier three: Chance Marsteller. Trent Hidley, Mark Hall, Parker Keckheisen, eh, no Parker. Uh, wait, you Parker's out, but you missed, uh, you did not say Derringer. Oh, I didn't mean to not say that. I will fight you. <laughs> I just do that to trigger uh, Tyler. <laughs> Alex Derringer. Tier four, Max Dean, Connor Mirasola, Evan Wick, David McFadden. Okay. I'm kind of with this. I'm wondering. I also feel. Could, you know. Well, maybe you're going to fight me on the Brooks. No. Or if, not, if, or if he should be tier two island. No. Okay. No, Him and Zahid so had a super competitive match. Zahid's a world medalist. I mean, Zahid was winning that match and then, you know, he lost it late, which that happens. And I think if you're asking me who's going to win that match this time, I'll say Aaron Brooks, but he hasn't done enough to say not a, they're not in the same category. And I wouldn't put Aaron certainly in David's tier yet. Um, I mean, David's literally yeah, the, the best wrestler in the world right now. Yeah. The only one I feel a little weird about would be Marsteller in three, given the fact that he made the world team last year. But then it's like he's up at a different weight class. And so I'm, I'm he does have a, de- a few decent wins, I think, 86, but I'm okay with him moving in. Does he? Because I wasn't aware I thought that he he'd beat, competed um, much there. Didn't he go overseas and beat someone that was pretty solid? Okay. Maybe. If I had a wrestle stat for freestyle, I would be able to look this up for you. Yep. I'm sorry. Kozak, help me out here, bro. Who would he beat? <laughs> I know there was someone. I just can't think of who it was. Yep. So, I mean, Trent right. Trent is someone I, I think is really good um, at freestyle. He's beaten a lot of tough guys, beaten multiple world medalists, uh, and I won't name them all, so I don't get yelled at by Tyler, but he's beaten some what? world medalists. And, <laughs> but oh. I've seen him wrestle against Zahid and Aaron Brooks so many times. And it's, yes. I think he's like, oh, and all the other numbers against them. And most of them have not been super competitive. So I don't, I, I wouldn't, I, I'm not going to bump him up. Even separation. Though, yeah. There's separation there. It's like a style thing. Like, I feel like those guys would have like yeah. similar, I, here's what I'll say. I feel like against the rest of the world, Trent Hidley, Aaron Brooks, and Zahid Valencia would have almost identical results. I I really feel like they would all beat the same guys and lose to the same guys. But I don't think Trent, for whatever reason, is able to beat Zahid or Aaron, which is, I think, kind of rare. But I think it's kind of the reality. Yeah. I, uh, I feel pretty comfortable with this one. You're right. This one was easy. That was easy. 97, easier easier kyle okay what did he do with kyle and Jaden? i i think kyle Jaden. oh one. you did that yes i you did. changed it didn't you no you didn't change it you stopped i've been on this you've been on this oh that's right that was the argument <sighs> tier one kyle snyder and Jaden cox okay Jaden on the tier cp so, wanted to argue kyle snyder island i i, I wouldn't hate it i mean Look at the look at the past. Look at the well. It's not the past. They beat him twice. Look at the in, future uh, on the rudest card. Yeah. Well, yeah. that was. And my was counter it? to that was that was super late. Jaden was tired. He was tired. He literally told me he's like, "I'm so tired. I want to go to sleep." <laughs> I know. I was like, "You have to wrestle Kyle again." Uh, those were competitive matches. Yeah, you're you're right. Yeah, you know, the yeah. It's going to be competitive, right? If it happens. I mean, also, this is me just sort of reverse jinxing the match to happen. Because I'm just like, all right, it's not going to supposed to happen in 21. Didn't happen. It's supposed to happen last yes. year. Final X didn't happen. This is just me being uh, bitter that we didn't get them last time. And just reverse jinxing it into reality. And so um, that's all I'm doing here. Hmm. It'll, it'll happen. It will? Yes. I feel confident. This well, yeah. it, 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 it's confident. not... <laughs> 
it hasn't not happened because of wrestling reasons. It's happened for non-wrestling related reasons, which is totally unpredictable. Which is, that's, that's kind of how I feel about Spencer. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so all right, I'm fine with it. Even though, <laughs> even though deep down in my heart and my soul, <laughs> uh, I want to, yeah, I want to fight funny. it because. I'm more, I'm just, I'm just scared is what's at the heart of this. I'm scared. It's not going to happen for the third time in a row. You don't want to open your heart. I, I just don't want to get hurt again. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're right. My heart's so big. Mm -hmm. Well, my heart's been totally eclipsed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you watch the eclipse bin? I could see you not caring about su such things. Uh, yeah, I was actually flying back from DC as an airport. And, uh, so we could not look at the stare at the sun. Um, <laughs> But I was I was actually hoping that it would you know get a little dark or something. I didn't notice anything. It was literally like nighttime. Ben would have looked at that thing with his bare eyes if he had the opportunity. Look at him <laughs> right, right at the at the ring light, which has the power of yes. ten thousand. I saw a hilarious video yesterday that um, the demographics of people who Googled. Why do my eyes hurt or my eyes hurt? <laughs> no, completely follows stop. the path of totality. <laughs> the eclipse. Insane. From Maine to Texas. That's like it was, oh it was up 300%, especially compared to the rest of the country. Of the country. Oh my wow. God. I'll just reveal my That's ignorance weird. here. Like you shouldn't, normally, normal days when the sun's out, you shouldn't look at the sun, right? But is it? No, you should always look at the sun. Okay, you, you should always look yes. at the sun uh, straight on. But. Seriously, you shouldn't. Is it worse if you do it during eclipse times? No, it's the same. It's the exact same, but it's just easier to stare at it longer because it's not, not oh, bright. Oh, this is kind of like a stare. That's what a lot of people think that there's more radiation during an eclipse as if like the moon being in the sun's path is going to like add radiation. As no, if. No. <laughs> yeah. It's the exact same as staring at the sun on a normal day. It's just no. easier because it's darker. This is kind of like the sterilizer situation where if you stare at a sterilizer, <laughs> that damn sterilizer, you're not going to know. Nothing. It I, doesn't hurt your eyes things. until down the line. And then you're Googling, why do my eyes hurt? It's because you just tried to clean some mats and you sterilized your eyeballs. Um, before before we move on to tier two at ninety seven, uh, Kozak did get back to you, Ben. He said Marceller beat Nurmagomedov, who beats the Heat at Worlds. Ooh, Boom. good pull, Ben, and better pull, Kozak. Yeah. So uh, did we moved Marceller up then. Oh, I still don't. I st I don't know why, but based on the, his other international results as well. Uh yeah, mm. I could be swayed on this one. Normally, I'm not swayable. <laughs> I'm like a concrete post in the earth, <laughs> refusing to. That is so like, not true. <laughs> so I'm uh, immovable. All right. We did 97. Right. Heavy. We weight. didn't do. We didn't do 97 yeah, we, tier two. I know. But, Everybody uh, else. Yeah, that's on. just one tier. See what I mean? See what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Um. Third. I mean, Colin. I, th I actually no. Let me ride for Colin Moore. He should be a tier two island. He has been Ooh. firmly. Didn't Machiavelli beat him? I hope I'm not wrong. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Mike. I kind of think. I think he did. He Machiavelli right. did beat him at the finals of U.S. Open. All right. <laughs> and maybe. Yeah, you're right. Jackson has maybe beaten him. Mock Mike. All right, fine. You know what? Mock Mike. Mock Mike. Mock Mike. Mock Mike Avello. Is that like hot Mike? Mock right. Mike. Is like <laughs> hot Mike. We got a mock Mike. Mike. Um, all right, fine. Colin Moore, tier two, three. I wouldn't hate putting Mike Mock, Colin Moore, and Nate Jackson in tier two. Yeah, that's Never probably fair. That could be fair. You you just like that Tremble had a close match with Jaden, don't you? <laughs> I kind of forgot about For, that. Forgetting that Jaden just likes close matches sometimes. It's true. Okay. Nate Jackson's the only person on this list who's in tier two who's beat Jaden. No, yeah, people forget, including people myself. People forget that. Including myself. <laughs> yeah. By people. We are people. <laughs> Let it not be mm -hmm. said that we aren't persons. Okay. All right. Heavyweight. Last one. Big boys. I can't believe you did this, but Ooh, I think I'm, I'm with it. kind of wild. Tier one. Mason Paris, obviously. And Gregory Kirk Kirkley. Kirkley. This, is a vibe. this is a vibe tier. This is straight vibes. Straight vibe tier. Uh, this was another Pulling America... Who are people going to pick? And it feels like they're probably either going to pick Mason Paris or Greg Kirkfleet. Then tier three, Two. Zilmer, 
sorry, yes, tier two. Hayden Zilmer, Nick Wazdowski, Don Bradley, Wyatt Hendrickson. Tier three, everybody else. Now, we get we get a lot of comments on social media asking us if Gable is going to show up to this. Do you want to open that up or shut it down, Christian? I'll shut it down and open up shop. <laughs> Gable Dan is not wrestling at the Olympic trials. Be sad. Be sad. <laughs> um, if you root for um, Michigan, be <laughs> Be oh, sort of a <laughs> why, why are we taking Gwiz out of mm-hmm. tier one? That's my question. That's my inquiry. Do we know factually that, that Gwiz can't beat Kirkfleet? I don't feel like I know that. Uh, yeah, no, but again, either. my logic was vibrations. Who are people picking? <laughs> yeah. And even in this room, I, people even are in this room. If you pull all of us, we I'm guessing would all pick Mason, either Paris. Mason or Kirkfleet. While that may be true. And if you put Gwiz up there, you got to put Zilmer up there, too. Ooh. Yeah, I, th- I think. I kind of think that's what you should do. I think there's a little too much yeah. respect to. Uh, not that we shouldn't yeah. respect Mason and Greg. I respect, and Greg might be my pick, Dag, on it. But yeah, if, if if I watch a match and Gwiz beats Greg Kirkfleet, I'm not surprised that's, at all. Yeah, that's fair. At I, all. Yes. Like, yes, I'm not surprised at all either. He's so savvy. And I feel like that's historically one of the nits you can pick with, with Greg. Tactics was well, so funny. One of the nits you can pick. I don't know. I just like that. Nit picking, nits to pick. Mm-hmm. All right. Sorry. <laughs> What's a nit? Uh, <laughs> uh, I feel it. It feels like something the nits with, you can pick. Feels like something with lice, but I don't know. Nit okay. picking, yeah. What is? Where did that come from? Yeah, I'll, I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out. Nit picking meaning I'm faster. Okay, okay well, I, 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 well, you have I'll, to carry the show usually. Yeah, right? yeah. literally yeah. picking True. the nit, nits or lice eggs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So we're just a we're just looking for lice. careful and meticulous. That's right. Okay. About finding mm-hmm. faults. Yeah, and. And lice eggs. Uh huh. Mm, who's hungry? So I yeah I think Zilmer and Gwiz should be up there with with Mason and Greg. Yeah. And honestly, while we're just inviting more people to this party, should the Great American Hero be involved? Because he had some crazy matches. Did he? What happened? Did, oh yeah, he he He's gave up on Mason. A few he times. gave well, Mason a big on Mason by like eight. Mason got gutted. Like several times. I want to say Mason was having rib issues, but I don't know. Well, he certainly was after the gut wrench, if not before. <laughs> My gosh. Um, very true. So, good rebuttal. Mega tier one, maybe. Potentially. So then are you sticking Dom on tier two island? No, he, no. I put him with those other guys. And, oh, so he would drop down to tier two with Lance, Traub. Thomas Hogan. I don't think Smith. you can put Hendrickson in tier one just because he's had close matches with Mason. There's he no, got teched by yeah. Greg. What? Yeah. We're talking we talking about style, style. but it was all takedowns. We're talking we talking post injury. He took one for the team. You should be thanking Wyatt for making the walk. He wasn't healthy. I, I, Every, <laughs> everyone knows he was not healthy. I agree. And, well, then why are you bringing it up? A compromise. <laughs> why he you, was coming off U23 you, gold. Yeah, he's coming off that, but he clearly injured himself badly, and it was, as you know, and now America knows, it was very touch and go if Wyatt was going to compete. He did it for the people because he knows that was a fire match, and he wasn't he wasn't Wyatt Hendrickson in that match. Um, yes. Not to take anything away from Greg, though, that Greg if, wasn't going to win. If I'm going just off vibes, I would put Mason. This is my first time I've inserted my opinion. I'll put Mason, Greg, and Gwiz on Tier 1. I know that Zilmer beat Gwiz, but I don't know. Felt. Ooh. It, I don't know. I don't know if I even. John agree with Kozak what I'm asked right now, this. But. John Kozak asked, when is the last time Mason Paris has lost to anyone in the field? He lost to Gwiz in 2021 um, at, a while. at World Team Trials, two straight. And he lost to Greg. Wait a minute. He lost to Greg at Olympic Trials and someone else. Yeah, but that was. Yeah, so several years ago, but I'm just answering the question. Kozak is saying he clearly separated himself as well. I don't know why you didn't read that yes. part, Ben. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, I was making the point for Kozak. I, <laughs> no, yeah, I, yeah. I, I did. I cited my source. This if is get, not plagiarism. I said, John Kozak asks. If you get down 8-0, you have not clearly separated yourself. That's a fact. No, Jack. he's giving the other person a little bit of hope. <laughs> I, I want to say he got down 8-0 and then teched him. 
I think he did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that happens. <laughs> There's a little hope. We see that every now. Maybe you just showing just how good they are. I'm gonna spot you. I'm gonna spot you. All right, hey, we good. timed this perfectly, Ben. We got through every single tier, and now, um, very excited. As I mentioned, Coach Tom Ryan was going to be joining us. I think he's still on. Uh, coach, national champion, wow. coach, head coach of Ohio State. Uh, coach Ryan, how you doing this morning? Doing great. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you fine, Coach. Thanks for thanks for coming on. Well, let's. Uh -oh. You said when we we were texting back and forth. Let's jump uh, right into it. So I guess I want to start. What that that I said uh, on Twitter that day. That what is it that you you disagree with? Let's. Uh, yeah. That's what I've been yeah. curious about. So let's. Yeah. So first, first of all, let's let's start with the. I can't hear him. Can anyone else hear Coach Ryan in the chat? Yeah, I hear a bit. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go for it then. Can all you right. guys hear me? All right. I hear you. I hear you, Coach. Go, sorry, Can continue. I think we start with the parameters of the call, right? What is the focus? What is the purpose? Yeah. Of yeah. of uh, of this call, right? What what's what's there to be what's there to be taken from the call? So what what's what is that for you? Uh well, I guess I wanted I just wanted to know. Well, here's how it started. Everyone freaked out when Cardenas committed to Michigan, and everyone is having you know. There's a lot of agendas out there. Everyone has this revisionist view of what the transfer landscape is. Michigan is active in it. Iowa, Penn State uh, are, are active in it. And I said, basically, every relevant team that is in trophy contention annually, non-Ivy, is actively pursuing transfers, has over history, and is continued to be actively pursuing those transfers via NIL or otherwise. And People cited, oh, no, not Ohio State, not Arizona State, not Missouri, not Virginia Tech. And I said, wrong, 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 wrong. All those teams have transfers, are pursuing transfers, are using NIL likely to get transfers. And the fact that some teams are or are not getting them doesn't mean they aren't actively participating in the pursuit of transfers currently. So that was my only perspective. I wasn't bringing up NIL or anything. Um, you brought that up. So I guess what in that is is inaccurate or, or untrue yeah so so the perception was that um for, first first of all the the landscape is about as wild as it's ever been um the rules are constantly changing what we can and can't do and i think the danger the danger in reporting something that that uh is not totally accurate can create uh, there are five big fears that human beings have and it, and it can create some of that so it's, we've got to be very careful on what we're tweeting what we're saying to make sure it's accurate your comment that i that i read was simply that um we've used transfers since the nil era you you, you quoted mckenna and tate we believe that regardless of what the space is saying about the transfer portal and the NIL space, that we will continue to do all we can to make Ohio State wrestling the best team in the country. And we will balance that with the logic of when you go in the portal and when not go in the portal. So I don't believe, I don't think that the teams are going in the portal and like the Michigans and Iowa's and Penn State's, it's, it's, it's I'm not getting in the, in the weeds and what, what they're doing. I'm focusing on what Ohio State Wrestling is doing. And in the last couple of years, we have zero transfers since the portal NIL opened. We have none. Joey McKenna was a transfer before the portal ever happened. I also know that back a little bit, you referenced the fact that I was a transfer and made it seem like, well, you know, maybe he's a little hypocritical. When I transferred, there was no internet. Uh, there was no money offered. Gable didn't even know I was alive when I showed up there. <laughs> there was no money offered. Um, so, and, and I paid a penalty. Some people, you know, I, I paid the price. I lost a season. Coach Gable tried to wrestle me my first year there. I had just beaten Pat Smith. They tried to wrestle me, and they couldn't because there was a penalty for me leaving. I lost a year. So, that era is that 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 era is long gone of of punishment you can leave when you want whenever you want and we have a lot of trust with our team and when things are put out there that that 
can jeopardize that trust, that's when uh, I get a little defensive. What was, what was put out there? Uh, I'm not sure I'm following. Well, well, the, 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 the the time frame that you're referencing was all about the NIL. We, 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 have yet to, we have yet to sign anybody since the NIL transfer portal opened. We, 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 now, we've looked at lots of people, and every person that we've looked at, um, my team knows about. I mm -hmm. meet with my team first. So reporting, reporting becomes really important to make sure that you've got the facts straight. Uh, otherwise, it jeopardizes, to some degree, um, the deep relationships that, that we work to build. Yeah. So I, I would say you are placing parameters that I never placed. I said annual, annually involved in the pursuit of, or getting transfers. And I went back years, you know, um, for, for many of those transfers. And I never said NIL era. I, ne I didn't mention that, but while we're bringing the NIL era, you are at, you, I mean, you guys, you guys went after Mitchell, you went after Cardenas. You're, you're trying to get these guys. You, whether you are or aren't, I think is ir irrelevant to the broader point, which is why malign a school that's getting transfers and give up and give some sort of grace to a team. That's not, it's, it's not a, it's not more or less virtuous to, to get, uh, to get or not get a transfer. And all I'm saying, and here's my total point with Ohio state, with the other teams mentioned, you guys are trying to get transfers. You're trying to get them. You're, you're, and you're using NIL as a tool to, to get them. Now, if you're not getting those commitments, that's a separate thing. But if you're involved, you're involved and there's nothing wrong with it. It's nothing. You should get those guys on your team. They're going to make your team better. Um, and I guess that's my only my only perspective is, yeah. is that you're, you're. Do you think I implied first? Yeah, first of all, we're really happy with with uh, Ryder Rogatsky and really happy with Luke Giog. They're both freshmen yeah. at ninety seven. Um, we are Messenbrink. My staff knew my staff. We we went with our team. We look, we looked at other transfers as well. Um, my team, my student athletes know every time we've looked at somebody, they're aware of it uh, yeah. because we bring them in and we discuss it. Right. So I never said that we weren't in the portal. What I said to you was that McKenna and Tate, that's inaccurate information. I didn't they say were they were NIL. The I never said that NIL was involved with them. I was but, just citing them. Unless you want to go back and look at the tweets and the comment. So it's like we're in a conversation about about a and uh, it was clear you're referring to what you're referring to is the transfer portal era. That's how I felt. Okay. So look, you guys, you guys do a fat, listen, Flo, Flo is in the business of, of getting the attention of their, of their constituency, right? You've got a paid constituency that has to, that you want to keep in the midst of, of, uh, uh, of, I mean, it matters that, that you put your know, content out that they want. You guys did a fantastic job um, in, in, in many ways. The Young Bucks was a great series. You've done a ton of great series. I mean, Flo has transformed the sport of wrestling. You transformed it, in my opinion, and I think in in anyone that follows a sports opinion. You provide content that young people can watch and aspire to be elite. When I was a kid growing up, the only way to watch wrestling was to get a VHS tape of the Tbilisi tournament and watch it. Um, you've 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 highlighted the, uh, the, the incredible standard for for young people. They know when and where they can go get to the nearest clinic and and technique. So flow has been great. Uh, this isn't this isn't like we're at odds in, in yeah. any way. Yeah. I was actually sitting on the beach on vacation when I read that. Yeah, I was, I wasn't even angry. I wasn't even angry. So tweeting can give the perception of, I mean, of there's, there's, there's anger. My only point in this is that to date, of course, we look in the portal. You, you if you want to be uh, elite, you have to look in the portal. The, the, the gray area here, which I'm not getting into is, is, Who's reaching out to people before they're in the portal? That that that's where this whole gray thing is. Transfers have happened for a long time. Yeah. Um, some teams are paying more than other teams are willing to pay for somebody. And I believe this at the core. At the core, is people want purpose and they want to believe they're going to a place where what they deeply want can be attained. And I think that takes precedent over any amount of money. I believe that I think people people want to attain their best more than 
uh, that that is that will take precedent over money. Yeah, I think that's happening. I, I I understand that, and I appreciate what what you were saying. I I don't think, and, and I don't want to I don't want to get into the to the the details. But I listed <clears throat> for Ohio State, for Missouri, for Virginia Tech. I listed a bunch of guys that are not during the transfer NIL era. Corbin Myers. I mentioned Blaze Butler. Um, Kyle Parco, who is whose program was dropped, McGee's. So I felt like I was actually incredibly across the board fair. I, I just listed that these were really good teams that had um, that had used transfers over the years, and I never mentioned NIL at any point. But but moving forward, you know, there there is a lot of stuff happening right now that is, you know, you I I know factually there's you got guys on on a team that are reaching out to all Americans on other teams saying, Hey, come over here. That's, that's happening at, at a lot of programs. And, and, and you know, I, well, do you know the rule right now, the rules right now, they do not prohibit um, cohesive groups from reaching out to current student athletes on other teams. So meaning you have a, a wrestler on your team and they could reach out to, they have a prior relationship with a wrestler on another team that does what? A donor, a booster, someone that's, someone that's involved in a cohesive group. So let's say that we'll use the, the wrestling club. They can actually, the rules are so gray right now. And there are none that, that, that it's the wild. It's a bit of the, bit of the wild west right now. You could, someone that has funds could call someone on another team and say, the coaches can't. Yeah. But, but, it, and say, hey, we're interested in having you come over to Ohio State. We're interested in having you come over to Michigan, Penn State, Iowa, Cornell. Um, so that's that's right now. That's that's allowed. Now, what there's not. I don't. I don't think there's a coach in the country that would say that Ohio State wrestling has tried to poach one of my guys. I'd be shocked if you if you if you heard that. Well, because it's, it's, and there's a, it's, it's it's legal. Okay. Here's the thing. So. It's legal. It's legal. Uh, okay. So, so now, so now it's a matter of what is your belief system? What is your belief system? Then that, and that's, and that's where, that's where, um, win at all costs. Could be. I'm not right now. No. Ohio state wrestling focuses on what, what our belief system is. And we don't believe that's right. We don't do it. So we haven't done it. Have we looked at people in the portal? Of course we have. We want to be the best team in the country. I mean, Mitchell Messenbrink was a no-brainer for every team that needed a 65-pounder. Yeah. He's a no-brainer. I mean, I talked to, I mean, Ashman's on the call. I mean, we were trying to figure out a way how we, how we could get him. We didn't get him. We were, I don't know, maybe we were second. Second didn't help us much, right? So, um, so yeah. You're, you're um, I, I kind of, I guess I don't know if I under, fully understood the one, the one point because it was like, you're not poaching, but you're also saying that it's it's not against the rules to have a, a booster reach out. So wh what is right. what is your in involvement with that? Do you have you ever had right. have you ever had a uh, a wrestler on your team reach out to another wrestler on another team and attempt to get them on their team on your to, to transfer? I mean, they listen. I, I don't have. Do I know that for sure? No, I would say absolutely not. Was it ever direction of a coach? Absolutely not. Never. That's not how we work. I, 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 when I'm underneath that tunnel, there's not a man in this sport that I could look in the eye and say, I've never done that. Okay. So no. Coach. Right? So, so we're, yeah. Is there anybody that enforces these rules? Have you ever been contacted by an organization, NCA or otherwise, that says, hey, we have heard this, whether it be you are trying to um, – break these rules to get this recruit or for your team or otherwise yeah. somebody uh, is trying to actively get one of your recruits through um, manners that are against the rules. Yeah. We, we have yet to be contacted by, by our compliance office here or the big 10 office or the NCAA that anyone has turned us in for anything that's illegal. Um, it, there is, there is a massive gray area right now in the, in, in this, in this space. And, I think something that should be noted is that, I mean, you know, we don't have anybody looking to leave, right? I mean, our team, I mean, I think, I think more than ever, more than ever, it's the responsibility of the staff to build deeper connections, uh, to communicate with your student athletes, 
um, so that um, you're 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 not in a in a position where people can be poached. Yeah. Um, because listen, we live in an era, right? I mean, there was no internet when I was wrestling, right? But but which is a long time ago. But we live in an era where everybody knows where where weaknesses are in the team's lineup. Uh, all these guys know each other, right? These 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 athletes know each other, and it's very easy to plant a seed um, of of a, a seed of opportunity um, in in someone, and then they jump in the portal. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. I mean, there is there is no easy fix on this right now, right? We're getting in like that. There's just no way us. There's just it's, it's not an easy fix. And it's take care of your team, do the best thing you can for your student athletes, uh, build deep connections with them, help them develop. And it's a tough space in all sports. Re- reading between the, the lines of, of what you're saying here and, and your tweets, you seem to have just a general sort of concern for the trajectory of the sport via NIL transfer. Could you, um, what, what stands out to you? What concerns you about maybe both? You know, I mean, we're in. I mean, there's a lot going on. I mean, in the NCAA in general, right? In in college sports, there's a big case out in California right now that if it's if it's lost, which it'll likely be lost, teams will have the universities have to go back, right, and pay a percentage of earnings to student athletes for the last couple of years. Uh, going forward, a handful of teams on each campus, student athletes will be paid. Uh, when you've got to pay people, that reduces the amount of funds in your department uh, for Olympic level sports. That's a big concern um, of, of, of just the simple finances of uh, a department. You know, that's that, you know, so that's a big concern um, right now. Okay. Um, so I, mean, I think the sport. I think the sport in general. The sport in general. Uh, I think the Big Ten. We've, we 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 Tony Petiti came on, who did a fantastic job with that with the coaches in the Big Ten. Um, yeah, uh, two days ago was our Big Ten meeting. Um, he he, I mean, he's a, a proponent of the sport of wrestling, loves the sport of wrestling. Uh, shared some 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 critical points with us and things that you know how can we help the sport grow and keep it keep it strong. So uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a tough space right now. What are your thoughts I mean, on, on NIL yeah. and how, how you guys are, are using it? I mean, we're using it. We're going to continue to use it to the best week. I mean, obviously, I mean, we, we want to continue to raise funds and it's the world that we're in. I mean, either get on the train or not. Right. So, so I think the NIL space is being used in a number of different ways. Number, number, number one, it's right. Taking care of guys that, that, uh, that are currently on your roster. It's, 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 uh, it's allowing for your roster size, right. To grow. Um, so instead of having 9.9, if you've got a booster group, that's really advanced and, and, and wise, they know the elite guys out there. And so it'll, it'll grow roster sizes. You can get more good guys on your team. Uh, I mean, we're doing all the above. Yeah. Right. We're doing all the above. So, um, we're working hard to raise more funds where we obviously keep our eye on the, on the transfer portal. We're making sure that, um, um, you know, our student athletes are, are treated fairly. Um, so you have to, yeah. I mean, or you have no chance. How, how competitive, uh, you know, and I, this may not be totally known, but how competitive do you feel like you yeah. guys are in NIL compared to other, other programs? You know, you know, it's like, there's a lot of hearsay. Yeah. I don't know what's true and what's not true. You know, I, there's not one contract I've seen by any number I've heard, uh, that someone's getting. I've heard all sorts of numbers. I'm sure everyone's heard the same numbers, but you know, the main thing for Ohio State Wrestling and our staff is what have we got to do uh, to fight for a national championship? And right now, right, uh, as you could see from the national tournament, I mean, the second closest team is 100 points away. So um, what have we got to do to compete for a national championship? And what do you, how do you do it in a way that's, that you can put your head in the pillow at night? I think that's, that's the piece, you know, how do you do it in a way that's that's yeah. uh, fair and right? Um, you seem to to I mean you're you're sort of alluding that you, there, there's a standard for how you guys are going about things and that that's 
you, you believe is ethical? Do you think that other teams are not adhering to the level of ethics that you are in, in terms of pursuits of guys in the portal, NIL, et cetera? You know, that's a good question. I think uh, I seeing some of the things that are happening, I mean, of course, I think you, you naturally, your brain can run to a direction that that is probably unhealthy. I think the most healthy thing that, that we can do and continue to do. So, yeah, I think there is. I think it's, I think it's human nature. Winning matters. Winning matters a lot. And there's a lot of gray. And what's gray and what's not gray is, um, is gray, right? Yeah. So, so um, uh, I think that's the space we're in. The main thing for us is we're doing everything we can to make sure that we, we have a, a someone in, our, in, a, in a lineup that can score points, lots of them at the national tournament, up and down the lineup. And in the midst of doing that, are we communicating fairly and appropriately with the people that we have? Do they know? Do they know where they stand? Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. You, you had a you had a, kind of a comment in in some of your tweets just about the the scoring record. You know, Penn State scored one hundred seventy two and a half, and you kind of felt like. There's, there's an asterisk next to that number. Could you, could you explain why, or do you, do you still feel that way? Yeah, I do feel that way. You know, of course I feel that way. Look, that, that doesn't mean like, you know, it's like you take something away from Penn State had a, a ridiculous team. Yeah. I mean, they're there. They do a fantastic job. They've got a great program. Uh, so, I mean, there's no denying the fact that we're all up against one of the great programs in any sport in college sports right now. That, that's not to diminish that. But the fact that that a coach, ask any coach, would you rather have 9.9 .9 scholarships or unlimited funds, which is basically what we have. If you can raise it, you have unlimited funds. Well, well, the more funds you have, right, the more high quality people that you can get. The more quality people you get, the more quality people you keep off rosters, uh, the better chance you have of scoring lots of points. That was my only point. Yeah. And, Comparing it, comparing an era when it was 9.9 .9 versus unlimited. Now you could argue, well, you all have unlimited. Well, that's not really the case. Yeah, but but for for your perspective or for Ohio State's perspective, you, you know, it's, it's literally the you know Ohio State athletic department. It was the number one earning and number one spending athletic department in the country in, in 2023. So aren't you also you know sharing in the in the spoils of of that wealth and the, by extension that you have a similar opportunity? Yeah, certainly more than most, you know, certainly more than I would have had when I was at Hofstra, right, for 11 yeah. years. But, you know, I think we can't confuse how much money is brought in from the department. The department cannot share any of that money from an NIL standpoint. So yeah. they're, 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 they're unrelated. Unfortunately, that's the case, right? If, if um, I think we brought in maybe a half million dollars in ticket sales this year. You know, that doesn't, we can't spend that as we want. Uh, so like every coach out there right now, uh, fundraising becomes, uh, incredibly important, reaching out to your, to your donor base and sharing what's happening and raising funds is incredibly important. Yeah. In, in addition to, I mean, you've, you've obviously built consistently competitive and, and a national champion team at Ohio state. W wouldn't you say that one of your your other skills. I mean, you're a great fundraiser yourself. I mean, you're sitting in probably the best wrestling facility in the world right now. Yeah. So, Would you say it's one of your. I mean, aren't you like? Yeah, we have a great donor base. Yeah. Of course, yes, we have a great donor base, and we have. You know, there's a, there's a deep love for the sport in the state of Ohio, right? There's 455 high school wrestling schools that have the program. There's a lot of legends that have come out of the state. So yeah, the sport matters here a ton. Yeah. You know, it matters here a ton. So, yeah, we're 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 in a better spot than most. Uh, and we've got to continue to work hard uh, in this area. Yeah. I think a lot, a lot of people are, it have periods of time with the transfer portal where it is sort of unsettling, where you see some of the, some of the movement from, man, you, you do in your heart kind of feel for some of the programs that are losing, losing guys. Do you feel in, in a couple of years when the, the dumb COVID year is gone, do you feel like it'll settle down a little more? I would say it's, I mean, even this year, it's, it's somewhat settled compared to last year and the year prior. Do you, do you see it maybe, um, you know, waning a bit or no? The number of transfers? Yeah. The, just how, you know, what, what, 
Michigan, Penn State, Iowa, and, and other programs have been able to do and quickly turn yeah. holes and, and really what, what are ultimately like sort of yeah. failures in high school recruiting and completely they're recovered by just, you know, plucking from other teams. Do you see that slowing down? Probably not. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why that would slow down. I mean, we, you know, from our standpoint, we've certainly been in the portal and looked at a couple of weight classes um, and didn't get those guys. Um, but, you know, right. You know, you, every, every coach, I mean, this is each coach has to weigh, this is how, this is where I feel about this weight class and should I go in the portal or not? And what kind of communication am I going to have with that student athlete right now? We feel really good about our lineup. Um, you know, we have a question mark with Sasso. Is he going to be able to wrestle again or not? You know, where does he go? If, if, if he can returns, he at 49, 57, but I think, I don't see it ever opportunity is opportunity. And if you have a weak spot and, and someone wants to leave the place they are, uh, I just think it's always going to, I don't see why it would be any less, you know, Michigan's done it. You know, you would, you could say, you know, is it, is it, uh, Michigan's done a really good job at, at filling their op- holes with, with transfers. Yeah. You know, Penn state had a couple of, you know, a couple of places they needed guys. They grabbed them. Iowa, they grabbed them. I mean, we, we, we didn't, we weren't, in a position where our holes weren't as I would say maybe as as wide as theirs were, so you have, we had some really good guys that we believed in, so we didn't have to go in the portal as much. There might be a day when we need to be in the portal more. Right now, we don't need to be. Um, we also look in the portal now and then to try to learn more about what is the going rate, right? So sometimes you're in the portal and you're 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 reaching out and you're asking questions to find out what are they getting. Mm-hmm. So there's a, this is a big learning. We're, we're we're new in this. This is a big learning curve of. What is the going rate out there? So there's a lot of moving parts to it. Yeah. Do you think that uh, a number of programs kind of discount the, because uh, I'm hearing you talk a lot about, you know, the, how the team is going to feel about it and how is could maybe affect mm-hmm. chemistry. Do you think that's something that's, that's discounted to a degree by other programs, the impact of bringing guys in? I mean, you know, I just focus on, I don't know what their room is like and what, what their culture is like, but culture is so important to us and trust is so important to us. And, and so I don't really know what it's like in another person's. It's like, you know, take care of my house, right? Our house yeah. needs some work. Um, so, so, you know, do I have a, 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 a small lens on what's happening? Of course, of course, it's my job um, outside. But the reality is for Ohio State, to fight for a championship, we've just got to get better. Uh, we've got to get better. So, um, and that may, right, that may be jumping in the portal and grabbing a guy, a guy here or there. But in the midst of doing that, we would, we would, we would never uh, uh, allow to move in that direction. Those to move in that direction without without making sure that uh, culture isn't isn't harmed by it. Yeah, that, no, that makes people sense. matter. Yeah, yeah, without without question, I think that's probably the way you have to carry it. Um, well, I, I really appreciated you coming on, Coach. I don't think many coaches probably would, but you, you've always been someone that's willing to kind of step into the fire and, and put your perspective out there. So I appreciate it. But what what else are are you excited about? You guys had a, a, a fantastic conclusion to your season. A lot of All Americans. Um, what what are you excited about in wrestling right now? In wrestling, yeah, I love heard, wrestling. So State, of, I know. Yeah, I'm excited. I tell you what, I'm excited about the new commissioner of the Big Ten. I think this guy, I think he has a real unique perspective. And I think he can help us a lot. Uh, he's a Harvard Law School grad. He's brilliant. Uh, he was with the uh, Major League Baseball, uh, really trans transform Major League Baseball. And he's got some things I think that make sense. That he's he's got good clarity. You know, this team. I'm, you know, in, in terms of Ohio State wrestling, love our roster. I mean, I thought we had the second best roster in the country last year. Um, and when you lose Sasso, he's, you know, Sasso has scored 16 to 17 points every time he's been in the national tournament. If Sasso's in the, in the bracket, Ohio State's second yeah. and not eighth, right? You see the numbers from two to 10, it was a 10 point difference. Uh, we hope Sammy can come back. Um, but we have a deep roster. We've got some really good young guys coming in. Uh, you know, you've got two in the finals and one's a sophomore, one's a freshman. You've got a Feldman who wrestled coming off of an injury that I've never seen anyone in, in my 31 years of coaching come off of and to compete the way he competed off of that injury is really bright. 
Uh, he looks better every day. He'll be a much better version, as good as he was this year. I think he'll be a, a, a far better version next year than he was this past year because he's got more days of just a big base and training under him. Uh, yeah. We're excited about the recruits coming in, so we're in, a, we're in a good spot. You know, I feel really good about our roster. Yeah, and we need to because we're up against a team that's going to return a ton of points. So, yeah, with with Sammy, what is sort of the is there any kind of time frame on when you would maybe have more clarity on when he could come back? I think it'll be on through 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 Christmas. You know, I think if he wants to come back, he'll enroll in second semester. Uh, if he if he's feeling really good, he may enroll first semester. So it's really a day by day thing. Um, you know, we're hoping that you know the leg gets back to the po point where he can compete at the level he was. You know, Sammy has said this before. Sammy will not uh, compete unless he can compete at the level that he needs to to be the best. So when it's day by day with him. Got it. You know, we have a lot of guys around the weight class, too. You know, Dylan's back at 49, and his kid Cannon is growing and looking really good. And, um, you know, Patty Gallagher could, could go either weight. So, you know, we've got some really good people where we need them. So, like I said, a really good where, we're, where we love our roster. Yeah. Um, with Feldman, you mentioned him, and I thought he was one of the standout performers from in terms of improvement mm -hmm. throughout the year. Did you feel like coming into the year, he's probably going to be taking some lumps and learning some things, but it, it's the season he had kind of what you anticipated, given he had no matches last year? You know, I would say he might have exceeded expectations. You know, I, I think the amount of training that goes, I mean, these are, we, we watch these matches, they're, they're, they're won by, right? The, the narrowest of margins and the amount of hours that go into making the difference in the narrowest of margins is, is, is kind of mind blowing to make up one point per se. Yeah. So to see what he went through the year before and to think that he can, he could compete at this level with the amount of just timing, atrophy, power, strength, mindset, like all the things that go into being really elite. I thought he was incredible. He's, I thought his season was really incredible and I've seen him since the NCAAs and he just keeps getting better. Yeah. Uh, but no surprise. I mean, when you're on your back for six months and you're, you're, you know, you've had a surgery that, that for quite often is potential career ending. Um, it's no surprise that he continued to progress the way he did. Uh, he got more fit. He got more confident. And he's going to have a huge summer. Last year, he had no summer. You know, last summer, he should have been on the world team. Yeah. You know, he should have been on the junior world team. If he's on the junior world team last summer. You're wrestling all summer. You come back in the in, in 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 August September. You're really fit. That wasn't the the trajectory for him, but he learned about a lot about himself in the midst of this. And so so, the short answer is, I think he he exceeded what I thought he could do, uh, and we're going to see a really really another really more even a more impressive version I think of him this upcoming year. My my last question is about Jesse Mendez. Fantastic NCAA tournament, won a title. Um, what what have you seen in Jesse since winning NCAAs as he's turned his focus to the Olympic trials? I mean, I mean Jesse is you know people. It's like well, I mean the way he won that match against Barlett. I mean he Barlett hit a beautiful technique on a beautiful shot, and it's like well what technique was that? Well the first technique is this this ridiculous competitive will, the will to win. And that's what that was. And the, the Granby roll was nice, of course, and he knew who he was in space and came up in a double leg. But the guy's an ultra competitor. He wants to win everything. You know, I think a good measure for people um, is training, is to ask your teammates who's the toughest guy that you train with, right? If you want to learn about yourself, ask your teammates who's the toughest guy you train with. And it should be you, right? It should be, it should be your name should come up time and time again. And in this room, Jesse Mendez's name would come up time and time again, no matter how much, how far it go. he goes up in weight or down in weight within this lineup. He's a warrior. He's a gladiator. And you need that. That's a prerequisite at this time. This, these guys are so good. So I haven't seen any change. I mean, he, he, he finished his season. We gave him a little bit of time off. And now he's really focused on, on making an Olympic team. He's a deep love to learn and improve. And, and you know, we got a lot of belief in anybody that's willing to suffer like he does and has a love for it. So, He's a great leader here. Awesome. We're excited to watch him at Olympic trials. Uh, again, I want to reiterate, you know, that I really appreciate you coming on coach that, that you know, somebody... I, appreciate you having me on. I have no beef with you, man. I like you. I like flow. I, mean, I like you. Been... There's nothing but you know, respect from, I was on from vacation. me to you. Yeah. 
I'm just trying to relax on the beach. And I saw something. I got all worked up for a second. You have a habit of, of tweeting from paradise, coach. I remember 2017. Yeah, I know, I my, my wife, I just dozed off or I wouldn't have done it. It was our 30th anniversary, you know, a little getaway, long weekend getaway. And, and, uh, and so if she, if she wouldn't have dozed off, it probably would have never, <clears throat> never happened. Well, I'm glad it, <laughs> in a way it, that it happened. And I'm glad we could have you on here. And I look forward to catching up with you, hopefully at Olympic trials, if not before. I'll, I'll give you the last word, Coach, because uh, the show's done otherwise. No, it's all good, man. Good to, good to be with you guys and just keep doing what you're doing. All right, thanks. Well, wrestling's critically important, so. Thanks. Thank you, Coach. Thanks right, for your time. All right. See you next time. And uh, appreciate you guys right. tuning in. Thanks again to Coach Ryan, head coach of Ohio State. Uh, Thanks to JD. There's breaking news. OJ Simpson died. Really? Yeah. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Dang. I felt like we had to bring it up. All right. Show. Well, where were you when you felt? That's crazy. Yeah, it's nuts, right? Okay. <laughs> Anyways. One of CP's well. heroes. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, that's insane. So, well, hey, real quick, just what happened? Was it was it an accident? Cancer. Or was, was there a uh, battle with cancer. Oh. Dang. Didn't, Was that secret? No, he had. Uh, I don't know. I maybe. Holy cow! All right. Well, our chat's lighting up about it. So. All right. Well, had... You pray for a big Buckeye season, right? That's my last <laughs> one. The big Buckeye season. Big year. Man. All right. Thank you, Coach. All Best right. of Come luck on. to the Buckeyes. Appreciate you. Appreciate y'all right, tuning guys. in. We will be back. What is today? Thursday. Today's we'll Thursday. be back on Monday. Thanks so much. And um, that's it. Thanks to Coach. Thanks to you. Goodbye. <laughs>